A few weeks ago, we talked about how you can test Linux by booting it off of a USB drive on a computer. What if I told you there was an even easier, more efficient, faster way to do that? Welcome back to Mackie Tech, everybody. And if you're not familiar with what a virtual machine is, it's essentially a way to run an operating system or rather emulate a computer with an operating system on top of another operating system that's called the hypervisor. If that doesn't make a lot of sense, it's probably easier for me to just show you rather than tell you. And here we see Zorn, which is a takeoff of Ubuntu's operating system for Linux running within windows we have the start menu down here we have all of our icons all of our windows features over here so how did i do that let's take a look the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to zorin os we're going to click on download and that's going to bring us to the welcome page there is zorin os pro which has a lot more features and has some other productivity tools and support from the developers we're just going to use the free one, Zorin OS 17.2, and we'll click on download. And it's asking us to subscribe, which I already did. And we're going to go ahead and click on skip to download. Now, I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to, I'm going to cancel it. Uh, here is the ISO right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Windows Hypervisor or Windows Hyper-V. And that is installed on Windows 10 up through 11. Hyper-V, here it is, Hyper-V Manager. Click on Open. And we already have one running of Zorin, but we're gonna go ahead and shut that down just so you can see how I did this. So we'll click on New. And I wanna create a virtual machine. And it's gonna ask me if I want to create it with default values or if I wanna make one that's a little more customized. I like to customize it a little bit because I like to set how much uh, hard drive space is on there, the amount of RAM that it allocates, that type of thing. So I'm going to click on Next, and it's going to ask me for a name. I'm going to put in Zorin2, and it's giving me the default path right here in terms of where I want the virtual machine to be stored. And if that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. If you want it to be stored maybe to another location or maybe on an external hard drive, you gotta click this box and then that browse window will open up and you can tell it where to store the uh, virtual machine. I'm gonna leave that unchecked. I'm gonna click on next. And then it's gonna ask us which generation that we want. So this is if you have, you're using an older uh, version of Linux or maybe an older OS, like a 32-bit version of Windows that you want to run on Hyper-V, uh, you would want to use Generation 1 for that. If you're using a 64-bit operating system, which is basically any modern operating system, you want to select Generation 2. All right, so I'm going to make sure that's checked and click on Next. And then it's going to ask us how much memory. So I'm going to go with two gigabytes. Uh, that would be 2048 megabytes. And I do want to use dynamic memory. And dynamic memory is essentially that it'll, it'll use the hard drive space or parts of the hard drive to emulate your RAM. It gives us a little more wiggle room if we need to. It is a little slower. But, I mean, two gigabytes is fine for this purpose. Next, connection for the Internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on default switch. We don't need the Windows one, we're just gonna go with default switch. Click on next. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna give it a different name, if we wanna use an existing virtual disk that we already created before, and if we wanna attach over a virtual disk later. I do want to use a new virtual disk, and I'm gonna use the size of the hard drive I want to have. Uh, we don't need 120, I'm gonna say 60, that's just probably more than we need for a Linux install. So click on next and it's asking us if we want to install it later or if we want to use it from a bootable image file, which is exactly what we downloaded. It's an ISO of Zorin OS, so that's what we want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on browse and I'm gonna to go to the ISO that I downloaded, which is right here, Zorin OS 64-bit. Click on open and let that get uh, hitched on there. Okay, ISO. That's what we want. We'll click on Next. 
And then it's going to go ahead and uh, tell us that, that that's been completed. We'll click on Finish. And there is our Zorin 2. It just completed. So right now you can see that we have our virtual machines up here. And we have the state, which means that is it on or off. And we have CPU image, or excuse me, CPU usage, assigned memory, uptime, status, yada, yada, yada. So we don't have anything yet. All we've done is we've created it, and it's kind of waiting for us to do something. So uh, on the right-hand side here, we have actions. We're still on our uh, Nuke PC, the one we used the other week to try to put Linux on. Um, and all these actions over here on the right are all actions with respect to uh, the Windows Hyper-V. Uh, on the bottom here on the right, we have all of the actions and all the settings and whatnot we can do for the Zorin 2 virtual machine that we just created. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start the actual the virtual machine. So I'm going to right click on it and go click to start. That's going to boot everything up. And we can see down here on the left, it has a little very small image that it's starting up. And we can see right now it says it's running. 12% CPU, uptime is 18, 19, 20 seconds. So we're just going to give it a little bit of time. We can actually connect to it, which essentially means turn our monitor on so we can see what's... This doesn't always work the first time. I sometimes have to go back in and tweak a couple things, but we'll just see if it does anything here. All right, we're going to... All right, well, we got an error. Good. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and close that. We're going to go into settings. And then let's go to, I'm going to go UEFI, Certificate Authority. That makes a little bit more sense than Windows. And let's see what else. We have the boot from DVD, which is fine. Go ahead and click on OK. And let's try that again. OK, so here we go. Here is actually the screen we wanted. And so we're going to go ahead and click on Try or Install Zorin OS. And right now we have our monitor on, as it were, to view the boot up screen. And now it's going to go through and it's getting all the stuff it needs to boot into Zorin OS. All right, so here we are. This is the same welcome screen we saw before we initially came in here. So this is another good way to try Linux if you're not sure if you want to use it. You have a testing environment built directly into Windows. You can go in here and install any OS to see if you like it. So we're just going to go ahead and install it. I'm going to click on Install Zorin OS. And here we go with English. That's fine. Continue. I don't want to be in the consensus. Click on continue. All right, so this might look a little scary, but this is just saying that, you know, we reserved uh, 60 gigabytes of hard drive space on this computer, and it wants to format those 60 gigabytes to use for Zorin OS for this virtual machine. So we'll click on install now. So it's asking us to write changes. It's going to create a couple of partitions. That's fine. Select our region. That looks good. Chicago. My name. Log in automatically. I don't need to use Active Directory. That's fine. Click Continue. And it's going to go ahead and install everything else. All right. So it has completed the installation. I'm going to go ahead and restart the virtual machine right now. All right, so it looks like everything is good to go. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And here is our OS. So we have Zorin OS installed on our Windows machine. We have our accessories, weather, files, home, desktop, downloads, music, pictures. Uh, this OS is very very similar to windows which is one of the reasons i like it so much that it's a really good entry level system for someone that's not familiar with one with linux and it's very easy to use so it looks very very similar so today we took a look at how you can run linux on your windows computer natively without disrupting your windows operating system essentially that's only scratching the surface of what you can do with a virtual machine 
in a future video, I'm going to take a much deeper dive on virtual machines and hypervisors, as well as discuss their benefits and why every small business or even a home office should consider using one to boost their workflow and efficiency, as there is a lot of ways you can save a lot of money on your IT infrastructure with the help of a virtual machine. Anyway, folks, that's gonna wrap it up today for this video. Uh, I'd like to know in the comments what you guys are using, if anything, for hypervisors and what VMs you like to run. Uh, we're gonna be taking, as I said, a much deeper dive in it in a couple weeks, so I'd like to get some feedback and preparation for that so I can maybe talk a little bit more about some of the things that you guys like to use. If you like this video today and you found it useful, please give it a like and make sure you are subscribed to Mackie Tech so you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you are a small business or maybe a home office that is looking for help with any IT projects, please reach out to me at Mackie Tech. That's www.mackietech.org. Click on the Hire Us button so you can schedule your free consultation. And thank you again for watching, and we will see you again really soon.